Hi. <clears throat> Hello, EuroPython. Uh, I really enjoy to be here today. Uh, a little bit about me. Yeah, as you already mentioned, I contributor of Apache Airflow and other smaller libraries. I'm a speaker. I'm originally from Ukraine. And today I'm, I'm go, I'm, I will start journey with you about some development and debugging asynchronous programs. Software development is hard because of different factors. And one of the factors, it's hard to debug. So I extended very known eight stages of debugging. So you probably every day, uh, you, you, you observe your program and first question that, oh, it, it can't happen, that does not happen on my machine, that should happen, and why does it happen? Oh, I see, how did it ever work on production? <laughs> Who wrote this? Oh, wait, it was me. <laughs> so, there are many books, uh, how to write programs in Python, but there is no enough information how efficiently we can debug your programs. So I feel like this when I'm coding and when I'm debugging, so it's still hard. Sometimes I feel I spend most of the time for debugging, testing, rather than development itself. And compared to asynchronous programming, it still is challenging so the interest of async programming has grown dramatically in the recent years, and it's slightly different from sequential programming approach, which means it's even more harder to debug because async programming added another complexity uh, which makes debugging asynchronous programs harder than sequential programs. So I have a question to the audience. How can I debug my Python program? Any ideas? <laughs> correct, correct. Print statements <laughs> is the right answers. And uh, usually, yeah, you can just add a bunch of print statements and you can run your program, you can see. And uh, okay, can you raise a hand? Uh, who you, who is using on daily basis print statements? So, okay, yeah. Uh, by the way, yesterday I saw a talk about PySnooper, so you can check it. It's very nice from Ram Rachun. Uh, yeah, so it helps you to to use better print statements. Okay, any others uh, ideas? So I typically also use Doug debugging, so it's quite nice. So when I can start talking with this small duck, which explaining, uh, I'm trying to explain to this small duck how it works, etc. it helps me a lot compared to print statements. Uh, any other thoughts how we can do it? Correct. So we can do it via debuggers. But debuggers of sequential programs uh, consists of, uh, like, it involves repeatedly stopping our program execution and then, like, oh, click next, like this. So we can put breakpoints and we can jump to the lines and we can continue and we can repeat it infinitely until we can find root cause. So this kind of debugging style uh, we call cycling debugging. So. Yeah, as I mentioned, you can click step by step so many times. Okay, uh, unfortunately, programming and parallel programs do not always have reproducible behavior, even when they run with the same inputs, which uh, can be different uh, rather than sequential debugging. Okay, let's re let's back to the Python. Uh, in Python, uh, traditionally, we, we write our programs in a sync uh, manner using this async await style, using a sync IO library with lots of, uh, with a sync IO loop, etc. And uh, even if you are not aware of this async IO, you can use some high level uh, frameworks which uh, more likely under the hood using a sync IO. So uh, async.io provide, provide for us uh, debug mode, uh, 
so which uh, can help us to find not awaited coroutines, uh, like mitigated forgotten awaits. Uh, we can <coughs> find non-thread safe API uh, exceptions. Uh, we can like log if something running more than we expected. Uh, same with callbacks. How we can enable this debug mode? It, it can be done in different approaches, such as like we are environment variable using Python dev mode, uh, using just the like key, key keyword debug true for sync your run and like or just using method on loop on current running loop set debug. Okay. So what it does, it helps us. So this is uh, how how you can see when debug mode is disabled by default. So it's just if your program has logs, it's just printing something. But if you enable this debug mode <coughs> on this on the line number seven, you can see uh, it prints that something executing more than uh, 103 millise uh, milliseconds. Uh, why it's printing it? Uh, by default, it, I think Kyo set like uh, threshold to 100 milliseconds, so anything above will be printed. Anything faster, just uh, hide. So you can tweak it if you're uh, looking for even faster coroutines execution. You you can tweak it. Okay. Another reasonable question. Okay, we enable debug mode. Okay. Uh, we can we can see some extra information, but returning back to our day-to-day -day basis, uh, probably how many of you are using REPL uh, on daily basis in Python? Raise your hand. Yeah. So Python is interpreter language which uh, has this read eval print loop. So you can run uh, any program. So you can. Uh, run something in REPL, see result, and understand how it works. So, uh, alternative to debugging, uh, we can use this REPL. But the problem with REPL currently, <coughs> if you run it in Python 3.6, for instance, you can't use await, async await uh, inside REPL. So it just show you syntax error and you can say, wow, await is a valuable keyword. Why it does not work? Here's a Python bug which explains the problem. And Yuri Silivanov created a PR. It has been merged, which uh, brings like alternative REPL. Uh, we, you can run it just Python minus M async IO. And inside this REPL, you can, uh, you can do await. So there's a drawback of such approach. You need to copy entire your program in REPL and like execute this await somewhere. Uh, IPython REPL, uh, for instance, for Python 3.6, already includes uh, this uh, feature with lots of hacks, but it works. So as you can see, you can just do like API calls using AUHTTP and you can do await, which is nice. Uh, for instance, if you're a Jupyter user and you're using, since Jupyter under the hood using IPython, IPyKernel, so you can do anything you can do with a Python uh, and await syntax inside your notebook. So you can put breakpoints, you can await something, and it can work. Okay. But uh, let's return back. Uh, as somebody mentioned in the audience, we use a lot PDB or IPDB, or maybe you can use PyCharm, but it doesn't matter. So. Uh, PDB defines an interactive uh, code debugger in Python. It's very well known. If you are still not using it, I highly recommend. So what it does, so you can put breakpoint uh, in any line by this new keyword, I don't remember, since Python 3 dot something. Uh, or you can just type import PDB set trace, and then you can run it. 
and it will stop on this line uh, and you can, I don't know, uh, print uh, entire function using list, you can again do next, you can do continue, you can do anything you want. So, and it works with a sync dev, so you can dig into any asynchronous function, there is no any issues. But still, uh, yeah, and still you can extend it. Uh, standard PDB has like very limited from user experience uh, features. So you can use any extension or like PDB++ or IPDB. So I like PDB++. PP++. For instance, it has very nice sticky uh, command, which can like, if you're a terminal guy like me, you can just uh, feel like you're in PyCharm. So it just uh, sticks this line. When you do next, it will move a uh, line uh, to, to this line and like throws your program on the screen, which is looks very nice. And uh, it's just a sugar, nothing uh, useful. So, but PDB++ has lots of extensions uh, you can find in docs, uh, it's very handy. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can do same stuff as with PDB. Uh, you can dig into any await function. Uh, next one is IPDB, same as PDB++, you can install it. The only tip I can show you right now, if you use this Python breakpoint uh, hook, uh, you can use breakpoint keyword and Python will inject IPDB instead of PDB, which is also handy. So you can use native Python keywords and stop your program just using breakpoint instead of typing import IPDB. So <clears throat> everything is okay, but the problem still all these PDB-like tools does not support uh, any await syntax. So if you stop in any like, I don't know, you have a handler which is asynchronous and you have await and you try to await something, you can't do it because IPDB doesn't support it. Here's the issue. It's closed. It's not implemented since 2019. Even IPython uh, supports it. So IP, what is IPDB? IPDB brings IPython REPL into your like uh, debugging session so you can use like IPython but still it doesn't support the weight. Why it doesn't support the weight? Uh, it's a reasonable question and you can ask me how I can await a coroutine in PDB. There is always workaround Right? So we always can find workaround. And then, why it's workaround? Because by design, I think IO does not allow us uh, nest event loops. So when you're in this debug session, you should keep in mind you have running event loop of your program. When you want to await something, it means you you would like to emulate something like async io run this coroutine, which is not allowed by design because it has practical problem. Uh, for instance, so typically it shows you runtime error. So this event loop is already running and uh, yeah. But as I said, there is like a workaround which has a name nested asyncio. So what it does, it patch asyncio library. So this is more or less real world example. You're using io file, which uh, what it does, it just uh, gives you ability to read or write files asynchronously using if you try to keep your code base uh, like equivalent, if you are using a sync code, then you it, it makes sense to use another sync code inside. But for instance, I put breakpoint, and I would like I would like to like await uh, AFP read, and see 
what it should like should look like so i like I, I i put some data to the file and now i would like to see results right so it's i don't know you would like to evaluate any async function in your REPL debugging session like on this slide so for instance i try to await read and you can see you can't use uh, await then okay okay how i can do it uh, i can get current event loop and i can <coughs> run until complete and it will print hello world so it works but again it works because we just patched async here. so it's only useful for debugging it's not for production yeah it requires modifications but uh, still uh, it helps you to uh, to do it for instance in node.js they also have a REPL and it supports a weight so uh, by design just to compare okay if you are on kubernetes or docker environment you not always can monitor your stuff so there is another library which has name io monitor which, ha which helps you to wrap your running web application for instance io http or other and expose port so then you need to tweak your docker file to open this port uh, if you want to debug it somehow and then you can connect to the host and port and and yeah uh, and then you can see some useful information so it's kind of like top or something i don't know so ps means like print all coroutines so you see currently I have one painting, painting coroutine and uh, other stuff. It's also very useful to like, uh, for instance, one use case can be if your program is hanging for, for a while, you just restart it, it works. Then again, it's hanging randomly in the night, you again need to restart it. But if you try to expose a port and connect, you can at least see where we sleep, what we are waiting for, so very useful. Okay, and last but not least, it's IO console. It's just like a very nice alternative to what I already demonstrated about REPLs. We just uh, uh, alternative approach, so you also can do a wait. Uh, so if you run your program with IPython, a Python, so yeah, you can do a wait. Uh, yeah, we don't have too much time. But I have few more important examples. One production, let's say, uh, very productionized. One is find deadlocks. So the problem of deadlocks in Python is uh, also painful, like in other languages. So what is deadlock? So I will give you an example. So if you have uh, like two async functions and uh, one like rely on another, and you can run it in parallel so uh, it just uh, yeah it just can or hang or just crash out of memory with recursive uh, error uh, there <coughs> you can find very nice issue uh, yeah r right now it's already in github issues but previously it was in bugs python org so it's how we can handle async IO deadlocks. Uh, so to, uh, it, it can be very useful and practical to have a deadlock detector like in other programming languages like Golang or anything else uh, inside Python. But still it does not exist. So there is like uh, one snippet which you can find on this link. Uh, yeah, and what it does, it just helps you to cancel your waiting deadlock and like f like try to find these deadlocks. So it also requires some modifications of your source code, of course, but it helps you to at least, uh, because sometimes you have memory and it will just hang. So you can wait like, I don't know, one hour and when it uh, can be killed. Uh, and last but not least today, it's a library with funny name is await what? Uh, so <clears throat> it's also trying to solve a uh, production problem 
assume you have long running async IO program that appears to get stuck about once for a period of time. Again, you can probably kill it and run it again. It's typical, like Kubernetes does, right? So if it's see some, uh, I don't know, out of memory, it kills pod and start again. But if you want to find root cause, uh, you probably uh, need to find at least line or place. So assume you have uh, like a, a sync function which reads something from socket and you probably <coughs> wait for a bit uh, in this line. And then you have a long chain of other functions which run uh, one then another. And uh, as you can see, uh, we just run it. So when we run it just with vanilla Python, uh, you can see that we like wait for pending coroutine and just stack trace. So if you read it carefully, you can see, okay, but I wait for foo. What is foo? Foo is a line four. Okay. So it's absolutely unclear because you probably don't know your code base well, especially code base of your third parties, right? And what await what does. So it's also do some tricks. Uh, as you can see, it's introduced uh, some debugging information. So it prints the, the full stack trace of uh, chain of your coroutines. So if you like, if it was full bar buzz until leaf. And now you can see, okay, I am in the leaf, so leaf it's waiting for socket, or even if it's sleep, like in my dummy example. So this is a problem. And that's how it helps you to identify the problem, you can fix it and you're happy. Uh, as a bonus, this library uh, also can draw your fanny, fancy graph if you, if you like. Okay, last one, it's just uh, for any production Python code, just uh, recommend you this IO debug. What it does is just helps you to print or even on callback, just to tweak, do something when, I don't know, slow, slow uh, coroutine exists or running more than duration. So you can send it to stats D and you can then draw final pictures. Okay, final, final thought. Uh, enable debug mode for async IO. It's uh, the first step you can always do. Uh, for, for production, of course, expose metrics and monitor everything. Uh, use debuggers if possible with some modifications. Uh, IO monitor is very nice for container environment and Questions, thanks. <laughs>
it's just uh, if you dig into this snippet, I will share slides. You can you can understand how it works. But it's just what it does. It just uh, cancel your coroutine early, and not waiting for recursion uh, error exists. So, but I'm usually I mean it's very tricky. So it's case by case. I mean there is no one common approach. But it would be nice to have this race detector for Python itself. Since like library exists, we introduce this new uh, subset of features. It makes sense to introduce race detector too, because you can easily uh, find uh, there is a good Stack Overflow answer for similar question, so uh, where you can easily like uh, shoot to your leg, like when write a code and find like and do deadlock. So, any other questions? All right, uh, let's uh, thank Andre again.